Hey everybody, we are continuing my series on For Steaming Country, where I read through a chapter uh, as fast as I can. We'll see how often we can get these up and you know whether we can get uh, up the full book by the end of the year. I've just launched a Kickstarter for hardcover editions of the series. This will be, you can get a hardcover for Steaming Country, The Blood of Giants, all the way through uh, the new book that is coming out tomorrow, The Iron Wedding. Uh, and I want you to check that out. That link is down in the comments, so go check that uh, if you can. If for now, I'll be reading this, and if there's time, I'll do the commentary in the same video. If not, I will do like the first one and have the commentary separately. We've successfully resettled refugees from Portsgate and are rushing to assist the Grand Rislandian Army with a budding crisis at the Wyranth border. I do try to send letters home when duty has me toiling past sundown, even when due late. I hope Liliana and Zara will forgive me one day, and I wish I could bring myself to lie and tell them I'll be home soon, safe and sound. An excerpt from Baron von Monocle's log, day 42 of the month of Dukes, 15th year of King Malachy the 16th reign. I presume you're acquainted enough with your father's signature to account for its validity, Mr. Dude Gearsmith asked me. Narrowing my eyes, I scrutinized the scroll. The writing had my father's flair, a little twist in the beginning of his capital letters. I'd known it was his long before Mr. Dugier Smith posed the question. It looks like his handwriting. Then you will follow me, he gestured to the door again. I glanced back at the house and shook my head. No, I still can't leave like this. I don't even know you. Please, Miss Von Monocle, I'm asking you to trust me. I can show you my credentials as an attorney at law licensed by the Rislandian Lawyers Association. I have my papers back in the horseless carriage. I believe you. Your credentials aren't a problem. It's just so sudden. I have so much work to do. Too sudden. Though it had been a long time since my father had originally departed. Nothing had changed with this news, did it? I considered what to do. With the repairs I'd have to make, I wouldn't be able to keep my farming schedule for the market anyway. If I received an inheritance, as Mr. Dubia Smith said, it would provide for the needed supplies and perhaps even some hired help to fix my home. Not only with the roof, but with all the other maintenance I'd ignored over the past two years. How much coin will I receive from an inheritance? I presume you'll be taking me to additional land, seeing as my father held the title of baron, I asked, trying to keep my firm tone of voice I used at the markets to conduct business. Mr. Dugusmith pursed his lips. There is an adequate trust, yes. However, I did not mean to mislead you to assume that there would be additional lands. There are two distinct types of nobility in Rislandia. I'm not sure if you would be aware, given your upbringing. His question irritated me. Just because I didn't live in a fancy city didn't mean I couldn't read or understand what he said. My mother made sure I went to school every day and made me read her books every night until she passed. I wanted to slap him, but that wouldn't have been the adult action to take. I acted as if I followed his every word instead. There are legacy nobles, those with families and lineages that have helped foster the Rislandia since the kingdom's founding, and then there are nobles who earn their titles in military service. Traditionally, those nobles don't receive grants of lands or power in politics until they have retired from such service. In your father's instance, he had unfortunately not yet retired. I slumped my shoulders. Perhaps I shouldn't have counted on receiving enough income to fix my home. So what is this inheritance, then? Your father, needless to say, enjoyed the dramatic presentations. Mr. De Gearsmith shook his head, a look of amusement on his face. He specifically requested I show you in Loveridge. I snorted at the thought of dramatic presentations. It reminded me of the time my father swung from a rope ladder from his Rusland, Grand Ruslandian Army's airship, landing several steps in front of me, not to mention the exaggerated stories he would tell me of far-off lands, ferries, pirates, and secret treasures. His service to Ruslandia sounded much better than a farm life. It was no wonder he never came back to spend time with me. Perhaps it was a foolish decision to leave with Mr. Dubia Smith, but I needed the money, and he did have my father's written word. I read father's letters dozens of times in all the time I'd spent alone in the last two years. He cared in his own way. His inheritance would be in keeping with the way he showed it. I'll have to make sure James will watch Toby, I said. Mr. DeGuerre Smith nodded in agreement. When we stepped outside, James and Captain Von Kravat stood next to a huge wheeled contraption in our front yard. It had four seats, some large levers, and a steam stack protruding from its middle. Its wheels were connected by a long strip of metal, which was bolted to the gears below of the vehicle, some of which protruded outward. The steam stack hissed, and the steam burst into the air above it. By Malachy, I said. You'd never seen a horse's carriage before? Mr. de Smith asked with a cocked brow. They're quite common in the capital. They have been for a couple of years now. 
Once you've traveled in one, you'll never go back to the old buggy again. It's a much faster means of transportation, and it doesn't spook. Captain Von Kravitz grabbed James by the back of his coveralls and forced him upright. Aw, come on. I was only taking a peek at the engine, he said, glancing towards Mr. Deguer Smith and me. Hey, Zerber, you have to see this. I see it, and I believe I'll be riding in it, I said, moving towards him. You get a ride? Captain von, von Boring here said she wouldn't let me, James said, pouting. Captain Von Kravat held a stoic expression, but I could see in her eyes that it was all she could do not to whack James upside the head. His teasing would get him into more trouble than he realized when it came to strangers. I'd have to talk with him about that when I returned. It's not a carnival attraction, James. I've had to take a trip to Loveridge with all these people. Though I tried to sound mature, the prospect of the carriage ride thrilled me nearly as much as it did James. I'd ridden many a horse to canter faster than James would dare to go. Speed thrilled me. Leverage? James asked, confused. You can't go off with strangers that far. We've still got work to do in the house, and I know you're behind on your pickings. I have to, James. I took his hand and squeezed it gently. Remember what you said about my father earlier? Well, Mr. Dugiersmith presented me his will. I need to take care of his final business, okay? James shifted his eyes from Mr. Dugiersmith to Captain Von Kravat. Okay. His voice betrayed his concern. Will you watch Toby work for me while I'm away? I asked. Sure, Toby, James said. He forced a smile at me. Be safe. Thank you. I stood on my tiptoes, planted a kiss on James' cheek. His growing stubble prickled my lips. Mr. Dugiersmith opened the door and, and to the back seat of his horseless carriage and used his free hand to help lift me the rest of the way. I plopped myself down into the leather seat, which was far more comfortable than the seats of any other carriage I'd ridden before. Gold trim lined the interior doors, a reminder of how out of place I was in my soiled coveralls. In Loveridge, I could find a nice gown or dress to wear, if an inheritance afforded me one. That would be a waste of good money, though. I had to be practical and think of the farm. Captain Von Kravat took the driver's seat and slipped her hands into the gloves. She turned the key into the motor and churned, and the motor turned. My door slammed shut. Mr. Dugiersmith circled around the other side. He carefully seated himself, making sure his coattails wouldn't wrinkle behind him. James waved from where he stood. Worry drowned any former excitement his face held. I'll be back in no time, James, I said, waving in return. Captain Von Kravat spun the steering wheel and turned the carriage around. The vehicle made tracks on their way, in which she followed back out again to the main road. James and my farm faded in the distance. We picked up speed, which thrilled me at first, but when the road bumped, I had to grip my seat to make sure I wouldn't bounce out. Farm fields and trees flew by faster than I could have imagined. The wind brushed my face and my hair blew behind me. After I took time to bask in the thrill of the ride, I leaned forward to the front where Mr. Duke Gearsmith sat. How long did you know my father, I asked. Since before you were born, Mr. Duke Gearsmith said. My curiosity peaked. Do you know what he was doing the last time he left? He rushed out the door that day, barely had time to say goodbye. I think something frightened him, but he didn't say what, I said, leaning back towards the steam stack. Don't touch that, Mr. Duke Gearsmith shouted. He tried to keep his eyes on the road, but couldn't help but turn toward me. Captain Von Kravitz looked backward to see what I was doing. The horseless carriage swerved and her eyes went wide. She jerked her head fa in to face forward. With a turn to the wheel, she set her path straight. That can burn you faster than you can say fire. I should have warned you before. My apologies, Mr. Dugier Smith said, returning his attention to the road. His voice became measured once more as if he had been angered. Never been angered. What was he we were asking? Ah, yes, your father's final mission. I'm afraid this is a classified matter. But he isn't declared legally dead? How can it still be classified? Because classified matters stay such until King Malachi himself says otherwise, Mr. Dugier Smith said, and turned back to face forward. I didn't have the nerve to ask any more questions after that and relaxed into my seat. Okay, that is uh, half the, pa the chapter. I actually have a pause here for a scene break. Um, and I'll actually do the, the other one in a separate video because we are getting kind of long now. I will do the uh, commentary up until this point though. Um, we have a, uh, uh, an emotional letter from Von Monaco at the beginning, which is uh, meant to tie into the scene as Zara is getting emotional uh, with discovering the fact that her father's dead and having to deal with this and, and, uh, and, and all the inheritance and all that. So I, I develop a lot of background with the family. Um, you know, he cares in his own way, but he, he shows her through physical affection rather than, uh, or physical gifts and things like that, rather than, um, you know, sort of, uh, spending time with her like she would like. It's, a, it's the love language sort of deal. Zara's got the, uh, she likes the time. Uh, he likes the physical gifts. And that's, uh, that's uh, what people do uh, and communicate differently. And it, it ends up to con with conflict between people. And that was the thought behind that. 
Um, Mr. Dugier Smith and Talion are, uh, you know, distrustful of Zara. They think she's a dumb girl and, uh, and are, are treating her as such. Uh, James, of course, is wide-eyed and just loves the steam contraption that we're presented with, which is uh, a horse's carriage uh, meant to uh, sort of uh, amplify what people would see in like 1905 to 1910 uh, in technology-wise, but with like more of a, a steam component uh, than a, uh, a general like gas and, and oil uh, direction, which we went uh, with in our real world. And so this is our first real steam technology we see. There's been a couple, a uh, couple brief mentions of some uh, other devices, but uh, but the, the horseless carriage uh, plays a big part uh, of everything in this world, and it, it's a lot of fun uh, to uh, experience that as, as from the view of Zara, who's just viewing this as a, a wondrous thing for the first time. If you think about it, we take uh, our driving machines for granted every day uh, when we drive around. So I hope that's interesting, and I hope the commentary was useful to you in sort of my thought process here. Uh, make sure to go back to Kickstarter for the hardcover editions, and check out the Iron Wedding uh, uh, Book 4 available tomorrow. Um, and I will continue with uh, Part 2 of Chapter 2, and, uh, and, and uh, get us there uh, tomorrow. Have a good day.